Wonderful. Thanks. And great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. Um, for me, I'm here in Brunswick or Balikibik, and that would be the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation whose lands I live, work and play on. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Now, I'm going to assume as the promotion for these webinars is done on FRRR's own social media channels that most of you know who and what FRRR is, but um, just in case you stumbled upon this somehow without having heard of FRRR, it's a national not-for-profit organisation providing funding and capacity building support to community community-led solutions run by organisations like yours, um, community groups and not-for-profits in remote, rural and regional Australia. Now, Tiana and I, who are running the webinar, we aren't technically FRRR staff. We work with JAW Communications. JAW has a long-standing relationship with FRRR. We've managed FRRR comms over more than a decade, including through multiple new websites, new branding, and definitely plenty of changes in the social media landscape. So that's why we're here today. Um, so we're going to have, you know, the basic, from the basics through to a little bit of extra for experts kind of stuff and lots of tips on um, make, managing the content and creating the content. So hopefully we've got something for everyone today. Let me to end that poll now, Lisa. Yeah, that's fine. They, they can end that poll now. Thank you. Thanks for that, guys. So um, let's start with the why. Uh, if you're yet to set up a social media account for your group, and there's not too many of you in that camp, but um, it's great to step back and consider what you want it to do for you. Um, if you have social media accounts already, it never hurts to take that step back and reconsider if what you're doing is working. So what are your goals? Most organizations thinking about social media will want to increase the visibility of the organization, but specifically how? Do you want to recruit volunteers, increase participation in community events, and maybe spark conversation among community members in a particular region? Um, the way that you use social media, it will vary depending on what your goals are. So it's really helpful to get clear about who you're talking to and how you would ideally like them to respond. Once you know what you want to do, share and who you want to reach, you can decide which platform or platforms to join. Um, it's good to remember that if you're short on resources, which is often the case in community organisations, it's more effective to use one platform well, rather than spreading your limited time and resources across multiple platforms. Let's look at some of the available social media platforms. So the three social media platforms that it's more likely you're going to be interested in um, and for this audience, we're probably going to really focus on Facebook because it's just a great platform for sharing what your organization is doing with the wider community. Instagram is a lot of fun and it's very visual. So it's great for using to um, build brands and telling stories through pictures. And then LinkedIn is a great networking platform geared towards learning, sharing and connecting <laughs> in a professional sense. So I'll go a little deeper into each of these. For a community organization, Facebook is likely to be the most important and relevant platform. It'll help grow awareness of your organization. It's great for engaging with your audience, building community and networking, as well as fundraising, sharing events and news. You're able to share a really wide variety of content on Facebook, so it's easy to keep it interesting. Maybe a photo one day, a video another, a link to a website, we find that people like um, personal content, not too personal, but say profiling a volunteer with their permission or posting photos of pets that visited the office is always popular. Um, but also make sure that it's not always about the organization. You can feature what's happening in the wider community too and champion those working within it. And that's a really nice way to reach out to other groups in your local network and connect and collaborate with them online. Instagram may be something you want to explore, especially if you have a lot of photos to share. 
Instagram and Facebook are also both owned by the company Meta, so they work quite well in tandem when it comes to planning and scheduling content. There's lots of creative ways to use Instagram, which by all means you can experiment with. What we like to um, remind people to remember is to try to stick to a similar look and feel for your content. So that's what we mean by curating the feel of your page. It's tying everything in so that it flows visually. For example, you could look for a color scheme um, that you can draw on or just choose the one filter that you use when you're editing. You can use hashtags on all of these platforms, but it's arguably most effective on Instagram. You can use them to connect and encourage user-generated content. That's a marketing term referring to um, content that's created by someone who's not an official representative of your organization. For example, you could ask followers to tag your account and in a post and use a hashtag, and then you can search for that hashtag on a platform and repost great content that you didn't have to source yourself. So full images that you don't have to do any work for. Um, just if you are doing that, don't forget to acknowledge and tag the creator if you do share their post. Now, LinkedIn is the other platform that you might consider having for the organization especially if you're looking to make connections with other organizations in your space and with donors, sponsors, corporate partners, or philanthropic organizations. It can also be really useful in recruitment, and it's a particularly good place to share insights and also successes in your work, um, and also things like employment and organizational milestones. Here's a few others that I'm probably not going to go into a lot of detail on. I think they might be less relevant for most community organizations. There's Twitter, which is a microblogging platform. Um, you may have seen in the media that it's been bought by Elon Musk. It's been rebranded as X. And so while it's always been an important platform for sharing thoughts with a large audience, I'd say if you already use it, keep doing what you're doing for now. And if you don't, it might be okay to wait and watch what happens with this one. TikTok, also often in the news, is an outlet for creative expression via short videos. It has a very young audience, um, but you'll have to pump out a lot of video content if you want to use that one. And Pinterest is an oldie but a goodie. It's often used as a sort of mood board or a place to collect ideas. It has a largely female audience, and I do think there's some good ways that community organizations could possibly use this. One example I could think of might be sharing recipe collections to tie in with a community garden or something like that. But we'll move on and talk a little bit about setting up an account properly. With both, both Facebook and LinkedIn, um, you need a personal account to serve as the administrator of your community's group groups page. However, you should never have just one admin. Ensure that your Facebook page is linked to the Facebook account of a permanent member of your organization. Often we see community groups lose access to their own pages when someone who's maybe a volunteer or a contractor is no longer involved with the organization but the only person with access. For Instagram, you create a new account and change the settings to a professional account. Um, and with this, always ensure that a general email address for your organization is used rather than a person specific one. Then you can link um, that account to your community group's Facebook page. As I mentioned before, they're both owned by Meta, Instagram and Facebook. So um, it's quite easy to share posts across those platforms. We will share the links to those guides to opening accounts with you after this presentation, and you can find them online too. Um, but just remember when you're Googling a how-to guide, there can be lots of options. So it's best to go with the one published by the social media platform in question, as their information will be up to the minute. So you've got an account. What next? Um, it's time to fill in the profile details and make your page look beautiful. It's very important to make sure your address, phone number, and email are correct and kept up to date, as people will often use social media as the first port of call for contacting you. Um, you, you might want to set a, a calendar reminder, maybe quarterly, to, to make sure that you've got the right information on there. Your profile picture should be a logo, and if you don't have a logo, then choose an image that represents your organization well. 
and then choose a beautiful cover photo. That's the large picture at the top of your page that showcases the essence of what you do. Then you can go in and configure your page settings. As the admin of the Facebook page, you can give other people full or partial control to manage the page with you. And you'll want to check your notification settings. Make sure you're only getting the ones you want so they aren't clogging up your inbox. Okay, so now you're ready to start planning and sharing content. The best thing you can do to make social media management easier is to plan your content in advance. Consider using a content calendar to stay organized. This takes the guesswork out. There's plenty of them online that you can download and then in the calendar you can mark important dates, events and announcements to share. Focusing here on um, Facebook content, you want to try and share a mix of informative, entertaining and interactive content that will resonate with your community members. It might include updates about community events, projects you're working on, educational posts, photos, lots of videos, people love videos and links to relevant resources. You can jump on board with national and international holidays and awareness days as a great way to fill some calendar gaps. Um, one thing just to remember with this is to make sure you do it in an inclusive way as not everybody celebrates the same days. Also, you can do a quick Google search before you post and see if there's a specific hashtag being used around that day. And to make things easy, one piece of content can be repurposed across your platforms. So you might take the Facebook post and reduce the amount of text for Instagram, letting the picture tell the story. On LinkedIn, you probably won't share every bit of content, just the ones that you can tailor to be of interest to peers and professional connections. Just before I pass over to Tiana, who's gonna take over for the rest of the presentation, here's a little mantra to sum up the winning formula uh, to managing content on those channels. Post regularly, post consistently, inform, engage, entertain. We always remind ourselves of these things. Um, yeah, over to you, Tiana. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for having us today. And thank you very much to Lisa for your amazing insights. You're spot on, as always. Um, so I'm just going to move us into the second half of the webinar. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is trying to keep things consistent across your social media profiles and just in general, your kind of online identity for your organization. Um, the reason it's important to keep things consistent is just to establish a bit of a brand for your organization, keep things looking professional, and it helps your audience kind of develop that immediate recognition of your organization whenever they do come across something that you've posted online, which ultimately will make your organization more memorable for your users. Um, so an easy way to kind of Keep that consistency across your social media content is to use the same color scheme, fonts, and imagery. Um, and yeah, that just makes it easily identifiable for your community members, like I said. Um, you might have a brand color scheme already. You might have a bit of a brand guide or something like that that includes a, a co color kit with hex codes and things like that. If you don't, but you do already have, say, a logo or a website, or anything like that, I would draw from those colors to again, keep it consistent. Um, and Canva is a really good free tool that you can use to do this whenever you're creating your content because you can store your brand colors in there, your fonts, and you can use hex codes for anyone who doesn't know what a hex code is. It's kind of like a numerical tag into a very specific shade of a color to make sure you're always using the right shade associated with your brand and um, so yeah if you haven't tried canva yet definitely recommend giving it a go because after you spend an hour or two kind of learning your way around you'll you'll find it quite quite simple and straightforward and it gives you some great professional looking content and um, the next way that you can keep your brand consistent um, is more to do with how you're writing and your messaging across um, your social media accounts um, a tone of voice guide is something that we would encourage any organization or business or um, anyone using social media to use. Um, but the reason why it's really valuable um, for kind of local not-for-profits, community organizations, things like that, is because with these kind of groups, we often see that there's limited resources. 
um, which does mean that kind of different volunteers or different members of the team are jumping in and pitching in whenever they can, which is obviously fantastic. Teamwork is great. We always encourage it. Um, but it does mean that whenever there's kind of a lot of different people involved, there can be a bit of a lack of consistency when it comes to your online identity. Um, so a simple way to combat this is just by creating a tone of voice guide. Tone of voice guides can sit on a pretty big spectrum. They can kind of range from being quite simple to quite complex. Obviously, a lot of you guys might want to keep it quite simple, and that's totally fine. Um, the way that we would kind of encourage you to go about creating a simple tone of voice guide is just sit down around a table or on a Zoom meeting um, with anyone in your organization who's going to be involved with the social media accounts. Um, and just kind of talk about, you know, the words and phrases that you would like to use and have associated with your organization, but then also, you know, kind of words, phrases, topics to avoid, um, things like that. Keep a kind of running list of both things and keep that up to date. Also talk about tone. Uh, what kind of tones do you want to use across uh, your social media, social media accounts and online? Um, and like your organizational values, you know, what do you want to project to your, your audience? What do you want, what values do you want people to see aligned with your organization whenever they're reading your social media uh, posts? And also brand personality. I would like encourage you to kind of talk about your organization from a perspective where you almost think of them like a person, describe them with personality traits. And it's the same thing with tone. You can see the examples I've given here, conversational, informative, formal, things like that. Uh, sorry, Lisa, go ahead. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, next up is just some simple ways to grow your audience. There are so many different things that we can talk about when it comes to growing your audience and different strategies that you can use across different platforms and things like that. But some really simple but effective ways that you can go about doing this is just encourage your volunteers and encourage your organization members, your community members to follow your page, engage with your page, comment on your page, you know, anything that they anything that they can do to kind of interact um, and also promote your page uh, with the invite friends feature. So this is particularly handy with uh, Facebook and LinkedIn because they will, as Lisa mentioned before, be attached to personal profiles. So you can invite your existing friends uh, that you have on those platforms already. Also, don't be afraid to share um, links to your social media platforms on your other social media platforms, if that makes sense. So if you do use more than one platform, you know, don't be afraid to kind of put up a Facebook post saying, oh, you know, hey guys, did you know we also have an Instagram page? You can, you know, check out some more visual content if you're interested in photos or videos and things like that. And yeah, just let people know that you're you're out there on different platforms if you are. Um, and just a quick note that whenever you do grow, grow your audience, um, celebrate the milestones, celebrate the wins. Um, one, because it's good to celebrate. And two, just because it kind of lands that extra layer of credibility whenever new users do come to your page, they can see you know, that you do have people following you and interested in what you have to say and engaging with the content that you're putting out there. And next up is engagement and moderation. Um, the rules here are quite simple, but really effective whenever you do follow them. Um, first and foremost, I would say to just try to engage in a timely manner, obviously in a friendly manner. You always want to come across as, you know, approachable and someone that people want to engage with online. Um, but also just getting back to people's messages or replying to people's comments as quickly as you can is really important just because people don't have huge attention spans on the internet these days. So, you know, if someone's commenting on a post one week and you're replying a week later, that that piece of content is probably long gone from that person's mind by now. Um, also encourage discussion, ask questions, create polls, anything that kind of encourages your users or your followers or your fans to do more than just click the like button is really great because, I mean, it's really great in terms of your engagement levels and it'll boost your content in algorithms but it's also just genuinely great to get people talking and get your community engaged and um, obviously keep it positive um 
there's so much negativity on the internet these days no one wants to kind of add to that or contribute to that and you obviously just want people to have kind of um positive ideas of your of your organization and um, also you can use automated responses if people say message your 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 Instagram or your Facebook page. Facebook Messenger actually recently updated the feature where you can kind of adapt your automated responses. Um, so definitely encourage you to use that tool. Um, if you go and have a look, it's quite self-explanatory. It's not too complicated. Um, and it just lets people know that you will you will get back to them and that you are keeping an eye on their inbox or your inbox, sorry. Um, and finally, like it won't happen overnight. Um, this is something that we say to everyone when it comes to social media, like it's so easy to become impatient um, and it's so easy to kind of see these pages or these posts that are, you know, going viral overnight or blowing up overnight and things like that. Um, but the reality is that's such a tiny percentage of content out there and such a small percentage of pages. And also sometimes what seems like an overnight success really wasn't. Um, so just be consistent keep going and you will you'll grow your audience and you'll grow your your online presence for sure and um, some of the features that you can use on social media platforms um create event pages definitely if you're planning some kind of community event um definitely always yeah have your social social media event pages for those get your volunteers your organization members your staff to share the events make sure people are aware that it's happening um, share updates about what you're doing in your organization. Um, whenever you're talking about, you know, other other local groups, other organizations, other businesses, anything like that, um, tag them. Make sure you tag them. This is like this is just a really good way to kind of boost your own visibility because it kind of helps to expose your content to your fellow or your peer organization's audience. Um, but it's also good for the organization that you're tagging um, because it helps kind of raise awareness of their organization amongst your audience. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. Um, yeah, and yeah, encourage, you know, event attendees to share their experiences and photos using specific hashtags. Lisa mentioned um, user-generated content earlier, and that's pretty much what this is. Just, you know, encourage people to, if they're comfortable putting photos and videos up, up online, if they've attended your organization or event, um, just let them know how much you would love them to share their experience online and um, get some branded hashtags going, you know, have some posters up letting people know if this is the hashtag you let them to use, that you'd like them to use. Sorry. Um, and Instagram stories as well are a really great way to kind of capture and share that in the moment type content which everyone loves to see you know you don't want everything to feel too too curated and too planned and it's nice to just get those kind of those authentic snippets of what you're doing what you have going on within your organization and again have fun with interactive features like polls and quizzes this just kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about anything that you can do to get people to engage beyond you know clicking the like the like button is always always a good thing um, and just a top tip at the bottom if your page is listed as a charitable organization you can apply to use Facebook's fundraising tools and add a don donate button to your page so if you're trying to use Facebook to raise some money just make sure that you're you're utilizing that feature and um, so I'm going to talk just really briefly a little bit about um SEO and some of you may have heard of SEO before some of you may have never heard of it before and um, it stands for search engine optimization which I know sounds a bit complicated and complex and it can be pretty complex but don't worry we're not going to get into the into the depths of an SEO strategy here today and um, I just want to give you guys a really basic understanding of what it is and how it ties into social media so it's generally refers to how Google friendly your organization is. So how kind of easy Google finds it to understand your organization online presence. Um, and why it's important with social media is because your social media pages are likely to feature in the top five Google results when someone Googles the name of, of your group or your organization. Um, so for a lot of people who, you know, haven't come across your organization yet, this will be the first impression they get. Um, and so for this reason, it's just 
really important. Um, again, Lisa touched on this earlier, just really important to keep your in information accurate and up to date, things like phone numbers, emails, website links, locations. You know, if people are trying to find you and get in touch, you just want to make it as easy for them as possible. Um, and on your social media profiles, also, if you have um, a description or a bio or anything like that, just try to include those buzzwords um, that are relevant to your industry. And um, just, you know, you don't have, it's not, you don't have to think too hard about it or it's just whatever kind of comes to your mind whenever you think of your industry and just try to include some of those top line keywords or buzzwords. Um, and it just helps Google to, to catalog um, your pages and understand what it is that you're all about and to make sure it's kind of throwing your organization out there and putting it in the mix whenever people are looking for something, looking for an organization like yours. Um, and on to measurement. Again, I won't get too deep into the complexities of this because measurement and analytics with social media exists on such a large um, spectrum. And really you don't need to be going super in depth with analytics in order to be able to use them effectively. Um, analytics is the collection and analysis of data points that help you measure the performance of your social media accounts. Um, so data points just refers to, you know, how many people are engaging with your posts, um, what time of day are people engaging at, where are people geographically located whenever they're interacting with your posts, things like that. Um, but you definitely don't need to be an expert to be able to um, incorporate a bit of measurement into your social media strategy and um, just look for patterns and results that stand out. Um, it really is just as simple as kind of jumping in and reviewing, you know, your top posts, what topics are getting, you know, the most engagement, what's starting a conversation in the comments underneath a post, what are people interested in, what are people talking about, what do people want to see more of, you know, it really is just looking for those top line kind of um patterns and going okay cool this is this is this time of day seems to consistently work for work for us or this topic seems to consistently appeal to people so we'll include a bit more of that in our content and um, but also just listen to your community members for feedback and if you know you're talking to people in the community or members of your organization and you know something in particular has piqued their interest then take that on board 100 percent because it's great to look at graphs and spreadsheets and things like that. But at the end of the day, you're putting your content out there for humans and for people to engage with. So when people talk about your social media content, uh, listen. Um, and lastly, just make a habit of continuous learning and adapting because as most people know, social media is just a bit the landscape is constantly changing, our social landscape is constantly changing, and, and people are constantly changing. So it's just always worth every now and again taking stock of what you're doing and figuring out what you could do differently or how you could maybe adjust your approach to um, use social media a bit more effectively. So and towards the end now, um, and I know that Lisa and I have probably mm -hmm potentially overloaded you with a lot of information in this small uh, half hour slot and um, hopefully you guys have learned something um, but if you weren't able to take every single slide in or every single piece of information in that's totally fine um, if you kind of take these four four top line lessons away from this webinar you'll 100 be on the right track with with using social media for your your organization. Um, so the first one is just choose the platform that will work best for your organization or the platforms that will work best. Um, this is really important because it's easy to kind of see um, certain trends and things like that, you know, blowing up on social media, for example, TikTok's huge at the minute. So you might be thinking like, oh, we need to jump on TikTok, you know, that's everyone's looking at TikTok. But at the end of the day, that's not really going to work for you unless you're in a position to kind of, as Lisa said earlier, pump out heaps of video content and you have lots of people within your organization that are willing to jump on camera and talk on camera and things like that so just choose what works for you and it, it'll you'll succeed 
and um, definitely set up your account with care and attention to detail it's easy to kind of think like oh we'll just check up a social media page or oh let's just you know make one or because we have an event around the corner we want to promote it or something like that um, but just paying that attention to the detail, you'll really, you'll find yourself later because you don't want to find yourself in a position where, you know, you don't have access to certain parts of your page or you don't have access to your page at all. Um, plan your content to ultimately save time and stress. This is definitely a good one. Um, I know it can be difficult to kind of set aside a couple of hours in your, in your week, but when you do do it, um, you'll just you'll managing your social media accounts will become so much simpler and so much more stress-free um, and lastly check the comments in your inbox and reply as quickly as you can i think that is us oh yeah questions um if anybody has any questions please feel free to let us know and um, if you guys want to put them in is it in the chat box yeah so people could either pop them in the chat tiana or i think they could also just call out if i'd like to as well <clears throat> absolutely but we did we did have one question starting off from carol who was just wondering about getting a copy of the session so just to let you all know that um once our lovely friends at jaws have had a chance to edit this recording it goes up on our youtube page but i also send out a link to everyone who's registered for the session so that you can access that directly as well so as tiana was saying don't panic if you didn't take it all in remove yeah. those top four points but also you will have access to the full recording as well <laughs> saying hi tiana thanks for the presentation what are your hot tips for responding to per reviews um I'll go ahead and answer this one so I would say first and foremost like the the most important thing is don't respond with anything negative um I think that in actual facts per reviews are a really good opportunity to kind of show the integrity that your organization has if you handle it correctly um, and it's a really great way to show publicly that you're willing to like take feedback on board um, and yeah just respond and say you know that you you apologize and that it's very unfortunate that you know person x has had experience a b c with your organization and let them know kind of what you're willing to do to rectify um the situation and often that what you'll find is that most people will be relatively forgiving in that situation no one kind of wants to look like they're kind of going to come at your positive energy with more negative energy um, and yeah it just shows that you know you're kind of as an organization you're doing your best you might mess up sometimes but you're willing to kind of stop take stock and look at what you're what you can do better. And I think that's only ever a positive thing. Thanks, Tiana. Um, we have another few comments and questions that have come in as well. So Carolyn, our colleague here at FRRR, has a great, great suggestion here. And that is that community notice boards on Facebook are a great way to talk and mm -hmm. interact with your local community. Do you have anything you wanted to add to that, Carolyn? Put you on the spot. <laughs> or am I? Yes, I'm off mute. Uh, hello from Maggie and me. The dog wanted to join in. Uh, no, I just find that a um, good way. So you join your community notice board and you might actually join several um, from the surrounding towns, uh, depending on, you know, how, how broad you want to communicate. And, yeah, I just find that's been a really useful way of getting um, mainly for me, it's information about events out and selling tickets through try booking. But, um, yeah, I use Canva to create a lot of collateral. So, um, yeah, that's all. It's all, it's, you know, it's, it's a fun, fun new world. 100%. Thanks, Carolyn. Great tip. Um, Craig asks, what's your thoughts on leaving comments turned off on Facebook? Goes against what you have said about engaging promptly mainly due to time and the group that he works or works with hire out a building and grounds and they don't actually run events themselves 
So on this one, I would say that um, it kind of is a case by case situation in the sense that if the idea of your content or your posts is to promote conversation, um, then I wouldn't advise leaving comments off because it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, sorry, Craig, you've said my group are out of building and grounds and we don't run events ourselves. And in cases where, you know, if the main purpose is just kind of to get the information out there, I don't think that there is anything particularly wrong with leaving the comments off, especially if it's going to be a case of people maybe leaving comments underneath the post and asking you questions and you just know that you do not have the time or resources to get back to people. And um, then in that instance, yeah, I think you just have to kind of make the judgment call based on what resources you do have available to you. Mm. I wonder whether you might want to have something like a pinned post at the top just to explain that to people um, so that they understand, say, we don't have people really monitoring this page. So comments are turned off. But if you have any questions, you can email so and so or call us on this number, that could be another way, especially if you're just using your page as, you know, for SEO purposes and as a, as a sort of listing of your, your organization um, so that it shows up online. Perfect, thank you. Um, and we've got another question here asking, if we tag another company or organization, does this come up on their Facebook page? and all their followers, and can all their followers see the post? Uh, yeah, so if we're talking specifically about Facebook, uh, this will come up in their tag post, that, this will come up in the tag posts of that profile, or that page, sorry. Um, and yes, some of their, like, some of their followers will see that post come up on their feeds. Um, Ultimately, it probably will be a relatively small percentage of them simply because that's just how the Facebook algorithm works. It's not going to be a case of every single person that follows the organization that you're tagging is going to then see that on their feed. Hmm. Um, but everyone who's following that organization, if they specifically went into the page and they click in the right places, then yes, they'll, they'll be able to see your post. So the other organization will be notified that they've been tagged and it might come up in news feeds, but it won't go onto your page's posts unless you reshare that post. I think that's, um, which is a great thing to do. Obviously, if someone tags you or you tag someone else, then the ultimate thing that happens usually is that someone reshares that because it just means that more and more eyes are seeing it. Perfect. Perfect. So that's, um, Last of the questions currently in the chat. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to, to ask our experts? Well, I wonder if on, on that note then, we might say a huge thank you to Lisa and Tiana for the amazing time and effort that they've put into putting this presentation together for us and the excellent has any questions following on from this you all have my email address now thanks to my very last minute <laughs> message with the zoom link in it and um, i will be in touch again of course within the next week or so with a, a bit of recording as well but feel free to email me with any questions at all and i won't know the answer but i <laughs> i know people do so it's all good i will be getting back to you very promptly if you do that Thank you so much for everybody listening and joining in today and for FRRR inviting us to, to share a bit of our knowledge and insights. Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Excellent. And thank you all for attending. <laughs>